retail media and, and what it means for brands, I think, is, is a really exciting and interesting space. Um, you know, it's, it is the fastest growing avenue of, of media right now, and, but it's because it's um, on, a, on an evolution and relatively new, um, it's sort of evolving every single day and new capabilities um, come online. Um, retailers are spinning up new uh, capabilities and, and new uh, networks, what kind of arguably seems like every day. But what I, and that's kind of a running joke in the, in the space is that a new, new, you know, a new retail media network stands up every single day. Um, but what I find most fascinating and interesting about it is that um, I like to think that not all retail media networks are created equal. And so um, for as long as shopper marketing has been around, um, retailers have always sold media to some capacity, whether it was in-store placements and you know, all the way you have shelf talkers and things like that oh, yeah. now to, to, to digital placements. But um, if, if a retailer is only just selling their own on-platform or in-store inventory, um, I like to say that it's not a retail media network. That's just mm. retailers selling inventory of their own assets, which they've right. done, you know, since the beginning of shopper marketing time. It, it truly, to be a retail media network, y you have to have third-party off-platform integrations and be able to create a, f a full brand-to-demand connected journey and that ultimately then can drive to a purchase at a retailer, but you have to reach consumers everywhere that they are with an experience that makes sense mm -hmm. and is engaging to them and and only when a retailer invests in that level of, of infrastructure and partnership that can create full funnel activation is when you truly are a network and a network that's kind of worthy of heavy brand uh, investment and, and consideration from, from an agency perspective as you're building out campaigns. Well, I'm glad you brought up offsite advertising because that is that does seem to be a really hot area now with retailers saying, you know, they, they've got this amazing data, purchase data about their consumers. How can you parlay that into effective ads throughout the web? Um, so what do you look for um, in that kind of offsite structure? Yeah, it's a great, uh, great question. Um, you know, the, the power of a retail media network is truly centered in the data because you know I'm a firm believer and partially I'm, I'm probably biased because I spent my whole career in commerce but I'm a believer whether you're doing upper funnel or mid funnel advertising if it if you're not driving growth and driving sales of a brand are you really driving brand love like you know I'm a believer that brand love doesn't exist if, if it doesn't uh, lead to brand buy and so no one truly knows a consumer and their buying behavior, including what they're buying, when they're buying it, what else are they buying more than a retailer. And so their, their data about their shopper is some of the most impactful data that you can have. And when you can marry that with what brands know about their consumers, you now have a much clearer picture of who they are, what they like, what, you know, what's gonna be interesting to them. And you can create a full experience journey that will hopefully ultimately lead to sales and and growth for the brand and so the data is truly what is is the asset that i believe that retailers are really selling mm -hmm. and and if you harness that well i i'm i'm a believer that it can ultimately lead to its its quality over quantity and so you're getting out of this impression game and it's not about how many people can i hit how many eyeballs do i get it's mm -hmm. getting relevant quality eyeballs that are going to ultimately lead to the actions that you want and that is far more valuable data than mm -hmm. just a, a massive amount of reach mm -hmm. um re, you know reach and frequency are just not the game anymore it, it's really about action um and then let's see looking at the the creative content of the advertising itself is there anything you could tell us about that, uh, you know, when you're working with clients about uh, how they need to be thinking about uh, creative when it comes to commerce media? Thinking about creative in the commerce media space is the most important thing that you can do as a brand. And sometimes in the conversation around retail media, I think the, the creative conversation gets lost. Mm -hmm. And that's to the detriment of the industry, in, in my opinion, mm -hmm. um, truly because consumers engage with content. Mm -hmm. and 
that's what delivers action. And so it doesn't matter how many placements you buy, how much inventory you, you sell as a retail media network. If you're not giving a consumer something that's going to catch their attention, engage them, entertain them, excite them, mm -hmm. and then incite action, then it, it's, it's truly for nothing. And it's the, it's the creativity that does that. But where brands have to shift their focus and, and think about how you activate in that space, the platforms themselves play a very different role than they used to. So especially in CPG, where you know CPG brands live and die at third-party retail, mm -hmm. you know, the those retailer platforms themselves become the place for awareness and discovery. You know, Amazon becomes the new Google, Walmart becomes the new brand.com. Mm -hmm. And so how are you creating brand experiences that that move consumers to action, but also invite them into your brand, build equity, build uh, value to them, and that happens in new avenues than it used to, and and all of that is sort of tied up into the the retail media networks themselves. And so you, as a as a brand, you and as a, a creative agency, you have to think about what are all the new touch points that you have at your disposal, and how are you using them? Which levers are you pulling to do what action along that journey, um, so that the right best experience is delivered to the consumer. Well, you mentioned uh, you know revenue and sales as an outcome, and that's I know very important. Um, are there any other signals that you find are important in this space? Or um, yeah, from a, a data signal perspective, obviously yeah. the ultimate goal is is sales. But I, yeah. I believe search data is probably some of the the most interesting data, okay. both from a leading indicator perspective of consumer intent, but also to de derive insights about your consumer. Mm -hmm. um, I've, I've said for years that the that consumers never lie to a search bar, and there's something incredibly mm -hmm. fascinating about that. They will literally tell you word for word what problem they're trying to solve, what what are they seeking, what right. and, and brands that will really harness that data and mm -hmm. get down deeper into that consumer intent and then build campaigns, build brands, build even product innovation that's centered around those problems that consumers are directly telling you that they have mm. is a wealth of knowledge and, right. and capability that can be harnessed for growth if yeah. done well and, and prioritized. No, it is interesting how many searches now start on uh, retail sites, right? Like in Amazon or... Upwards of 75% or more. And so that's yeah. why I say, you know, especially in CPG, no one's going to a brand.com to learn about a brand. Mm. Consumers are predisposed to go to retailer sites Right. Now, be, for a couple of reasons. One, they have the expectation of the information that they're seeking mm -hmm. is going to be right there, kind of right. at their fingertips. It's going to show up quickly, and they're wow. going to get um, they're going to get the information that they want in in a way that they're very accustomed to. So they're not going to have to put a lot of work into it. They're not going to mm -hmm. have to research things, you know. And and then they know that even if they choose not to buy it at that particular retailer, they know they can. And so that's why they. Mm -hmm a consumer is more inclined to go to a retail platform to start a search about a product or to, to try to solve a problem. If they're, they're seeking to solve a problem or fill a hole that they need to mm -hmm. fill, of course they're gonna go where they know that they can acquire it. <laughs> and so it's the role of those platforms play, you know, take on a new meaning in a consumer's life. Okay, well, uh, Jacqueline, this has been really informative. Uh, finally, uh, is there anything that you're looking forward to, let's say in the next six months or a year to a year, or perhaps uh, a change you'd like to see? Anything on your wish list, let's say? Um, I continue to be really excited about the evolution of this space, and and I'm also you know selfishly and completely biased, uh, having been in the commerce space my whole career. It, you know, commerce is really having its moment right now, and it's really exciting to see that be. Up, you know, front and center in the conversation. Um, but what I would love to see, my wish list, is that we as an industry can move away from thinking about things in terms of the funnel. Um, mm -hmm. I think the funnel is dead um, mm -hmm. in in so many ways. You, when you're talking about like consumers going directly to retailers, um, at the point of discovery and awareness, you know, so awareness, consideration, and conversion are all happening simultaneously in a matter of seconds on one platform mm -hmm. when done well, right? And so mm -hmm. it's everything has to be fully connected and it's about giving the consumer the right best experience where they are in order to del deliver growth for brands. And I think we as an industry owe it to ourselves to stop applying an organizational construct of this you know, pre-shop, shop, post-shop post journey in, in this funnel mentality because it, that's not how consumers live and behave. And so we, we need to change our way of thinking and our way of approaching them that mirrors the way that they approach the world.